and how it relates to civic tech. Um, and I'm also really curious to hear from some of you at the end about um, your thoughts about what's exciting for you about partnering with um, public service on projects, what's difficult for you, um, and how can those relationships be a little bit better. So I'm going to do my best to project. I know we don't have a microphone. I'm getting over the world's longest cold. Um, so I'll do my best. If I have a coffee fit at that cough drop, I'll take care of it. Bear with me. Um, hopefully it won't be an issue. Okay, so um, I wanted to talk a bit about uh, what's going on in Brampton right now. Uh, so part of that is that it is a really young city, a really uh, exciting emergent city. We've also had a lot of recent uh, changes at sort of the um, corporate level, um, but it's a very exciting place to be working. Um, I wanted to show you this article that just came out last week. I don't know if those of you who live in Toronto, I live in Toronto, live in Brampton. I don't know if you have seen um, or heard about this new story, but there was a big shakeup last week. I came back from vacation and looked at my Blackberry and was like, oh, wow. Uh, there was a, a huge change in the structure of the organization. And um, this was a story in the Globe about it where they say that this is uh, a bracing example for Canadian cities of how sort of municipal government should be being run. So, um, there's a lot of changes that have happened in order to embrace ideas about innovation and future readiness and um, putting new ideas at the heart of what makes municipal government work. So, um, so you may say something about this, if you have it, then um, this is just an overview of what it's all about. So my title at um, the City of Brampton is Community Engagement Coordinator. Um, Public 
application or something is very old. Um, you're going to have a bunch of retirees who are complaining about what's going on. Um, it makes it interesting when you're working in a city where the population is a lot younger. Um, that you're reaching a bit of a different audience. The second thing is that it is Canada's ninth largest city. So often we think about Brampton as like a suburb of Toronto and that's, that's it. Um, but it's a, it's a big city into its own right. Bigger than Hamilton. I think Hamilton is number 10. Um, there's 550,000 ish people living there. Um, so it's a big, it's a big city by community standards. Um, it's also a city that has a large minority population. So uh, according to the 2011 census, 66.4% of Brentonians are our uh, belong to a visible minority group. In Toronto, I think it's 49-ish. So Brampton has, has a bit more um, ethnic diversity than Toronto, perhaps. Um, and another correlated aspect of that is that 45% have a mother language other than English. So a lot of people are either first or second generation Canadians who either come from a country where they were speaking a language other than English growing up, or they grew up in a household in Canada where their parents were speaking a language other than English. Um, and so that makes some interesting challenges in terms of um, in terms of communication, but also creates a lot of opportunities to really um, use use language that's very accessible to a broad audience and make sure that, that everybody is going to be able to understand the material that's going on and that it's not in um, it's not in really bureaucratic technical language. So these four that I've highlighted so far are things that made me really excited to work in Brampton. The last one, the last one that I'm gonna highlight is something that made me um, less excited to be community engagement there, and that's the live work ratio. So um, this, only 35.8% of people both live and work in Brampton. The majority, by far, of people who work in Brampton work in Toronto or Mississauga or somewhere else. So that makes it a challenge to reach people when you're trying to get someone to come out to a meeting at night and they've just spent an hour driving back from Toronto. They don't necessarily want to come out and have their say about an issue because they're exhausted and they've got kids to feed and they've got stuff to do. So um, in Toronto, this ratio is something like, I think it's, I was looking it up because I'm interested because I'm one of the people who goes out of Toronto for work. And in one of only like 15%, and in Brampton, it's like 66% of people leave the city for work. Okay, so having even do that through context, uh, I'll just talk a little bit about some of the work that I've done working uh, in community engagement in Brampton in the year and a half since I've been there. So um, these are, this is not a comprehensive list of all the stuff that's being done in the city of Brampton in terms of community engagement. These are just the things that my team has, has touched. Um, the most. So we've led um, Budget 2016 and Budget 2017, which is just about to start. We did a youth survey, so again, Brampton is a very young city, but we had good data about youth, um, and so I initiated a survey to collect that data. It's available on our open data portal. We've got a really cool open data team in Brampton. Uh, and we're playing with some interesting uh, finessing of, of the results that we got. Um, we've done one community service satisfaction survey that was measuring how happy are people with the services the city's providing, uh, what's important to them, what's not important to them, and we're going to be doing a second one in the winter. Uh, and then we've done a design gym and a human-centered design workshop. We still be talking about a little bit later. Um, and then we've also collaborated with other departments on things like the city's official plan about land use, uh, the Parks and Rec Master Plan, Arts and Culture Strategy, Strategy, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so we're very busy. Um, I'm currently a one-person team, so we've got a lot on our plate. Um, and uh, it's a very exciting, it's an exciting place to work because you get to touch all these sort of different projects and have, a, and have a level of involvement with them, and then see them off and have somebody else kind of take care of the baby that you Okay, so one of the projects that I talked about is a design jam. So this was something um, that I led an initiative back in October of 
So, um, so they came to me with this, with this initiative, and I was thinking, I already had in the back of my head, wouldn't it be great if we had some opportunity to talk to all these people, these young people in Brampton, who are interested in design, who are interested in tech, who are interested in arts and culture, who have this knowledge, who don't really have a place to put their expertise and bring them into the process of designing uh, city services. So, uh, so we developed this pilot program uh, that we did, again, in October 2015. We worked with uh, 20, 20 people from the community uh, and had them participate on this project. So the way it worked was they came for an afternoon, it was a Saturday, we sat down, and very intensively on that Saturday, um, the participants worked on one of two issues. So one of the, one of the projects that they worked on, the second one, is the IT through on the project I talked about, about how do you make it easier for residents to access city services online. Uh, and then there was a second project that I've been thinking about and um, was part of the, it was just something that, that my group was expected to deliver at some point, which was an online engagement platform uh, to engage residents on city issues. So I was interested in getting some feedback on that. Um, I know a lot of cities have an online engagement platform. City Toronto has a mixer. Um, a lot of cities have similar things. Of Brampton's unique demographic features and some of the unique qualities that make it a special place for work to live. My feeling was that it would be these out of the box solutions weren't necessarily what we needed, and it would be really great to work with people who are developers, who are tech enthusiasts, and who are themselves members of the communities and the intended users to talk about what would they want this product to look like rather than reverse engineering something to different needs. Um, so we had a really great series of discussions about this on the day of. We did some prototyping, we talked about what would be the needs for these services and, and what would be the support features for them to have. And, uh, and it had some really exciting results. So first of all, it was a really fun day. And often when we have um, like community engagement with tech issues um, from a municipal perspective, it can be kind of dry. But it was super fun. Everybody had a really great time. They were playing with Play-Doh and pipe cleaners and having a great time. Um, the second outcome of it that was really exciting was that we were able to actually do stuff with result that we had. So often, you may have experienced that you go to a municipal government consultation about something, you give your feedback, and then nothing happens with it. Um, but we were able to actually use the feedback that we were given. So the feedback that I got on my project about the online engagement platform, we took the board, instead of, instead of buying one of these out-of-box solutions, we heard from the community, we really want something that is adaptable, that we can meet our needs. So we, we bought a service that we are um, sort of like custom building and we can do some A-B testing, we can refine it as we go on. It's not something that we're locked into this one particular look and feel and functionality. Uh, we're gonna be able to adapt and grow the service um, as the community grows and as we find out what works. And for the online self-serve portal, that's already been released to some extent for so they've got that out a little bit. They're unrolling things uh, as time goes on, but they were able to prioritize things that people to them, um, and also to, to include some functionality that they hadn't even thought of before. So from the municipal government perspective, the thought was, oh god, this is a really great way that we can like get free consultation from people who are experts and also users of the product without having to pay and go through this like, laborious process of, of finding experts. This is something that we should totally be doing more often. So for me, that was also a victory because um, I, my feeling is that there are a lot of people have this expertise and have this passion and are just hungry for a place to put it and to be taken seriously. So I thought that was really great. So um, this is just a slide. So I just wanted to highlight. So um, in recent months, the city's IT department, which is again doing work on um, on one of these projects, has gotten some attention. Microsoft came and did a video about them, which was really exciting. Everybody was really excited at City Hall about um, some of the interesting stuff they've been doing with this, uh, with this online self-serve portal in terms of integrating CRM technology to make it a customizable experience for the user. So if you log in and it has your information about where you live, what services are interesting to you, the kinds of things that you've done in the past, it will customize that portal based on things that are appropriate for you. Not, not everybody's getting the same information. So if you live on such and such street and there's a zoning application in your area, eventually the goal is that you'll get information about that engagement opportunity, and you can give feedback, and if you don't live in that area, you won't get So um, they've been doing some really exciting, awesome stuff, and it's been really great to collaborate with um, IT on this project. The second thing I want to talk about uh, quickly is uh, a human-centered design workshop that I did for staff in, 2000, in June of this year. 
So this was another pilot project, and it was an all-day workshop that I did with about 22 staff. And um, the rationale of this project was that if working in municipal government for a year and a half, so I come from an academic background, this is my first time as a full-time public servant, um, something I've noticed is that often the way that products and services get rolled out is somebody higher than you gives you an order to do something. Because they've heard it's a good idea or they've heard somebody else is doing it. You look around and see who else is doing that and like what's the standard way that it's done. And then you find the cheapest or most cost efficient or most uh, efficient in some other way, way of getting that done and then you do that. So it's kind of, okay, well what's someone else doing? What's someone else doing as a standard bearer? And then we'll just copy that. Um, and the problem with that is that Often, especially if you, if you are in a city where there are different demographic features or there are different political features at play, it doesn't speak to the unique character of that community. Um, and so I wanted to um, do some kind of training that would inject this idea of learning from the community first when you're thinking about your projects that you're going to do before you, before you um, get too far in the process of what you want the service or product to look like. So this, this workshop um, was kind of two parts. So one part of it was teaching staff about what is human centered design, what does it mean to focus on the user's experience as a citizen, so uh, what, what's that all about? And then the second part of it was giving them a design challenge and having them think a little bit about how to tackle this challenge. So we gave them a very broad challenge. It was how might the city of Brampton's uh, staff work to better engage the community? And they had all day to do this. Uh, I sent them out to talk to residents city councilors, whoever they could find in like a one hour period, and ask them about their experience um, engaging with the city of Brampton. They talked to businesses, they talked to, there was a group of kids who were doing like a tour city hall, so they talked to a bunch of kids. Um, it was a really great experience, and they were all saying, it never even occurred to me that this is a thing we can do. I can just go out in the street and ask people about like, what, what would you like to see? Um, and it seems so obvious, but you just don't think about it, because it's not part of your, it's not part of your habit of how you do things. Um, so that was a great um, energizing experience. And I also thought it was really interesting that so they were divided into four groups, and every group came up with a completely, totally different idea of how they could do this. It wasn't like there's one clear thing. It's like there are so many things they could be doing. Um, and so here are, the, here are the four projects that they came up with. So one was a project to have collaborations between post-secondary and high school students and city staff to tackle emerging city issues. So an issue or a planning issue um, that you have some way for members of the community who are really passionate and have talent to collaborate with city staff on that. Um, the second idea was to have some kind of uh, merch swag store that would be part of City Hall. It was all about building Grant and Pride, um, so making, it, making cool um, things that were designed by local artists that people could buy and use it to foster a sense of local identity. The third was a downtown revitalization project that involved public art and, um, and changes to the way that space is used downtown. So Brampton's downtown is a little bit of a, it's an interesting downtown. Um, and they just wanted to make it a, have very different characters so people would feel more inclined to come to downtown and, and hang out around City Hall and participate um, in those kind of ways. And then the last, um, the last idea was an online engagement app where you could get real-time location-specific news and information about ways that you can participate in the community. So um, I want to stress that this was just an idea generating session. These are not for projects that we'll be pursuing in the near to medium term. There's no plans to do any of this, but it was just to get ideas generated about things that we could be doing differently. None of this was on anybody's radar at the beginning of the day, and at the end of the day it was all like, oh, and we could also do this other thing, and we could also do this other thing. Um, so it's just a good way of, of changing the way that the thought process Works, getting people out into the community, talking to the actual people that were there to serve, um, and having their input about the way that we design our projects. So I wanted to um, quickly ask a couple of questions, and if you have any thoughts about this that, that we don't have time to get to, our email address is at the bottom. I would love to hear from you. Um, but as I said, there's a lot of change that's been going on in the city of Brampton lately about the way that things Structure. There's also changes about the way that we're approaching community engagement. Um, there's a lot of excitement about incorporating civic tech into, into engagement and making that a more consistent uh, relationship. So my questions are, um, as people who are in, interested in this sort of issue, what, what has made you excited?
Yeah, um, you mentioned this in the beginning, um, but uh, that youth survey, did you guys complete that youth survey? We did, yeah. So we completed it, it's on our open data portal. Currently it's just in a CSV file, as like raw, huge data file. Just raw, um, okay. But it is available online, we're working on doing some more interesting stuff with it that makes it more user friendly. Um, but we just wanted to get it out there as fast as we could. So you can go, and if you look up um, the City Brampton Youth Survey, it'll take you to a page that has like, a summary of the results, and But I, I think it's a really great project just because we're, in, we're moving towards doing this open data stuff, but we're missing some of these really foundational data pieces that you can compare to such to. So open data is not my world, but it seems to be like that was a big gap, and, uh, and it's something that we should be moving towards addressing. We have time for, I think, one more question. It's a little, it's interesting, it's a little bit, um, it's kind of 
with projects. So like often when I work with projects, like this has already been a very comprehensive strategy. So we reached out to them to talk about some other work that they do, but it was very sort of cool and wasn't kind of coordinated between city approach. Um, Brampton was an interesting example because it's got a regional government structure. So some of the things that like City of Toronto does are done by the region and we don't touch them at all. And so it becomes a little more complicated to collaborate on some things. But then other things like working on the downtown infrastructure project or we'll collaborating very closely with the region. So it depends very much on the project and uh, it's complicated. <laughs> Thank you so much.